92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. We are streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5. And we are streaming audio and video live, RTC Channel 4, right, Scott? We're on your website. Ah, excellent. WROIFM.com. Dot com. We have, a, we have an excellent webmaster for that website, by we're, the way. We're on the Internet? Well, I tell you, we're all over the place right <laughs> <Wow>. now. <laughs> anyway, on this Wednesday morning, we're pleased to welcome to the studio, Indiana 2nd District Congressperson Jackie Walorski. Good morning. Good morning. Boy, I didn't know what I walked into here this morning. <laughs> Thank you very much. First of all, I had to check and make sure Baron was actually <laughs> having a Merry Christmas, and he wasn't going to be a Scrooge this year. He is. And uh, then I walk Scrooge. in, and this thing is like streaming video, so I, it's a yeah. good thing I've got hairspray in my hair today. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have totally you with us. Totally different. It's good to see you guys. I'm glad for, to be here. Thanks for joining us. This is great. 2016, Jackie Walorski in Congress. What all happened? You know, I, well, a lot happened. <laughs> I can um, say when it gets, oh, not much. Yeah, you know, it's just one of those years. No, you know, um, you know, I spent a lot of time, and, and obviously we've been talking about this a lot before the election, but, you know, issues in this district that have just really resonated and folks have been worried about is the national security of this country. And obviously I've served on, on the Armed Services Committee, the regulations that have uh, crippled the, the ability of employers to hire and um, fighting to, to repeal those regs and, um, and you know, taking care of our veterans has always been a big issue to me and fighting for our veterans. So 2016 was a packed year, but I, but I, I am here today to tell you that um, I believe our future is bright. You know, I went back to session right after the election and the excitement in D.C. is palpable. You can really feel it. It's an electric environment right now. And, um, you know, people, there's just, people are excited about hitting a reset button in this country on the very things I just talked about because they're important to this district. So the things that are important, you know, from South Bend to Wabash and Rochester and Pulaski County and, and this district are the things that resonate around all of America. And we saw it in the election. So, you know, January 3rd, we're sworn in. And I'm grateful, and I'm very, very humbled and grateful to be um, the second district representative. I take it very seriously when I raise my right hand, and we're going right into session after that, starting this repeal process. Congratulations on your victory, if I haven't mentioned oh, that thanks. before. No, thanks. I'm, no, I'm grateful. No, great. Then will be term number three. Scary how fast time flies. It does. My gosh. It does. It, but but you've learned so much in the first four years, right? Oh, it's a forever learning thing. I bet. You know, I never, and, and I've been very clear with the folks in the district, I do not profess to be an expert in somebody's field. What I do profess to do and what I do um, and uh, am grateful to have the chance to do is to fight for our fellow Hoosiers. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you said on the Armed Services Committee, one of the more exciting moments I've had since the election is to see my president-elect actually talk about this advanced fighter plane that I'm spending a lot of money on. Mm -hmm. uh, things like that, uh, the Air Force One, but things like that in the years past, we're all old enough to remember the aircraft carriers and the submarines that John McCain said, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to get a handle on some of this stuff. I want new fighter planes, but... <laughs> I think this president's been, president-elect has been very clear that you know, he absolutely wants to do a reset in the military. He wants to fully fund the military by the same token, um, really look at where these expenses are, where he thinks there's excess. I think the choices that he's making to help him make those decisions like General Mattis are right on, spot on, exactly what this country needs right now. Brings in a lot of credibility, a lot of respect, but, you know, somebody from the field like General Mattis to know where is the excess and where are we going and what is this footprint going footprint going to look like what's it going to cost and you know how do we get on top of some of the priorities militarily which obviously the first one is destroying isis what do you think and we'll get back to that in a second but what do you think this is all going to mean for the veterans well, I think I think we're going to see um, the biggest reset when it comes to taking care of veterans in our country. You know, I've said this before, and and we talk a lot about it when we talk uh, here at WROI. But you know, the state of Indiana, we have a half a million veterans. We have 6.2 million people in this state. We are over the top military. We are patriots. We believe in fighting for freedom, and we're often the first to call upon, the first to go. And I think you know, one of the things I found out serving on the VA committee is um, how tangible. I've had to be involved in fighting for the lives of our vet, or the very lives of our veterans that oftentimes fall through the crack because the VA is not in tune to literally working for the veteran, and it's 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 been blurred over uh, several decades. So we've taken a couple of strong steps forward, but I think that uh, President-elect Trump has talked about his desire to really come in and um, have the government keep their promises and redo the way veterans receive their care. Uh, just a whole different paradigm. What are your campaign commercials related to that, as a matter of fact? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you know, um, I fight for veterans every day, and I never thought my wildest dreams that there would be one day where um, 
I literally had to call the VA secretary myself and ask him to intervene in the life of a veteran, a young veteran, and his wife. And, um, you know, he'd been misdiagnosed and he was dying. And the VA secretary himself had to correct that, and he did. And I'm grateful for that because they told the story on that commercial. Yeah. Um, but it shouldn't take, it, it should not take um, an act of Congress to get care that they were deserved and that was promised to them. Will they address any of the pensions in the VA? I think they're going to address the VA from top to bottom. I think it's going to start, though, immediately with health care. There is an immediate need. Veterans do die, and um, some of this is literally at the hands of a negligent VA that's become a bureaucratic uh, bureaucracy run amok. Some of it is um, the access to these opioids where suicide continues to climb, but it's all inexcusable, and it all needs to be redone, and we have to do better. And I think the first part of that, I think you'll see, will be with health care. Veterans Mobility Safety Act. Yeah, that was, you know, that was kind of an interesting concept. Yeah. You know, we talk a lot about the fact that um, a lot of the issues and bills that I carry come right out of this district, and they come out of constituents' complaints. And we had a couple of different cases where veterans um, in different parts of this district, but from this district, you know, they had applied to the VA. They they received the twelve to thirteen thousand dollars to have their vehicle adapted, so they actually had a better quality of life. They could get around. And you know what happens is, and this is just you know well-meaning folks, but you know a neighbor they'll pay a neighbor or they'll pay some guy down the street um, who may not actually understand what it means to adapt one of those vehicles and in one case um, they'd gone to somebody um, who really didn't know what they were doing with this adaptive uh, technology and the brakes went out and the veteran um, nearly lost his life wow. at the hands of somebody who was actually trying to make things better and in another case um, they had a malfunction in a vehicle and nearly wrecked and mm. so this bill just brings some certica certification some standards to the VA um, allowing them to um, be involved in, in having some standards of, of some folks with the idea that if they're going to be giving twelve to thirteen thousand dollars of tax money to a veteran to help their quality of life they want to make sure that somebody is certified in understanding how to adapt these vehicles it's a really common sense thing but it, it, it came up it was just signed by the president a couple of weeks ago but it came up because of situations right here in the district Okay. Is some of what's going to happen in the VA getting everybody on board with, and I'm not quite sure how to phrase it, but I've been in situations before where I'll be told by one person, well, no, you're not, you're not eligible for that at all. And then two years later, here that I was, and they were just misinformed. Well, I think one of the things you're going to see, I think that'll be a priority and something that, that I've been involved working on for the last four years is this idea of veterans having choice. And I think you're going to see uh, President-elect Trump come down heavily on the choice program, which will allow veterans. For example, my dad was a veteran um, and my dad, you know, died of cancer. Um, luckily, he had additional private insurance that allowed him to stay at home. Hospice coming in. He wasn't relegated to have to drive 90 miles by himself, be isolated, have no family support when dealing with a terminal condition. So I think you're going to see a lot more access to choice even right here. Um, for veterans that live right here in this Rochester area, having um, the ability to go to a hospital closer to them. And I think you'll see um, a rapid progression of choice emerging where veterans can st go where they want to go, get the care they want, but be close to home where their family can be with them. You mentioned ISIS a bit earlier. Go ahead and uh, dwell on that for a second, if you would, please. What are we yeah, going to do? Yeah, well, and obviously, we're just seeing it's like we had again over the weekend and, and yes. yesterday in Berlin. And, you know, I think that uh, the president was clear, and I think one of the reasons that, you know, Trump won by the margin that he did is he hit on the same spot that I hear in this district every day, which is we want our nation safe and we want ISIS destroyed. Um, compared to some of the, the things that we've heard, you know, I've said many times over the last four years, we've had a vacant commander in chief. We have not had the Obama administration engage in much of the vulnerabilities that we have found ourselves in. And we've grown more vulnerable because of the gaps and the vacuums that have existed around the world. And so I think um, Trump has made it abundantly clear that in bringing the picks that he's brought on that are defense hawks, but also very, very astute military commanders um, that they're very, very serious about dealing with ISIS as the number one issue when they take office. Is Washington, re D.C. ready for a president who talks about Saudi Arabia more honestly than we've heard any president in a very long time talk about I him? think Washington is ready and, and better um, have its reality glasses on that the American people... You know, there's something inside of every American. There's a gut inside of us. And when we come together and we agree on what was really nearly a political revolution in this country, um, that basically pushes the reality into Washington. That's where the American people take over. Common sense thinking dwells. And that's where things happen. The resets happen. So whether Washington is ready or not, 
this administration is coming with Republican House and Republican Senate ready to do the work that we were just elected to do, which is a major reset. So that's very- what somebody, nobody's talked about for a very long time, and I've never heard anybody talk about it until Mr. Trump. The fact is, every time I fill my car up, I'm funding ISIS. Absolutely. And I think I heard a, I heard a fascinating interview a couple of days ago on some of the folks that are on his transition team talking about the way to cripple um, some of our enemies in the Mideast. The quickest is to, you know, really... Uh, really concentrate our domestic production of energy and oil and start cutting into the profits in those nation states that uh, seek to bring us harm. When we talk about the domestic economy, come back to the second district. How do you find it when you go out and visit with folks? Right now, and you know, we're all over the district right now. Right. One of the things we're talking about is tax reform. Okay. And I'm getting into a lot of service clubs and, and trying to get into every county to, to let folks see what we're talking about with tax reform because I want to hear from them and I want them to go to the website and I want them to talk about it. Um, but I, I see a lot of optimism right now here, just as in D.C. A lot of my colleagues are feeling the same thing. Um, people are optimistic. Consumer confidence is up. The stock market's up. Um, People are seeing that their vote counted. They're seeing that the things that were really frustrating our fellow Americans um, are going to be reset. And they're going into this uh, inauguration season with a lot of hope and optimism and putting a lot of responsibility on the shoulders of all of us that they just elected for us to do exactly what they told us to do. So, you know, I can't wait for January 3rd to get there and to go right into session after uh, we're sworn in. And I think that you'll find the same amount of enthusiasm. I mean, think about this. You know, folks ask me in D.C. all the time, you know, so so how's it going in your district? You know, what do you think? (laughs) And I tell them, I'm the happiest Hoosier in America. We want it all in this state. You know, we just um, sent our governor to the vice presidency. Hoosiers have never had the kind of access to this White House that we do right now. There is nobody more involved in the transition team of who is going to surround our our D.C., uh, you know, uh, surroundings there than uh, Vice President-elect Mike Pence. And you're talking about a lot of common sense just moved into D.C. I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be more thrilled. And I think our fellow Hoosiers see that, and they sense it as well, and people are very upbeat. I think now we hold the record, don't we, for the most vice presidents? I don't know, but, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, <laughs> of all be. those other vice presidents, nobody, <laughs> nobody in our from our state has been more hands-on into tangibly reshaping a government than Mike Pence. Well, it's good to hear you say that because I think so many times – People in uh, the Hoosier State and and all over America think that Washington, D.C. is just this island that somehow exists out on the East Coast and has no relationship to what's happening in real life. Absolutely. If you look at the list of the number of Hoosiers that have been looked at for a lot of different positions, and not just secretaries, but a lot of positions in Washington and some of the folks that that are going to be working in this Trump administration, I think it's uh, beyond impressive. Um, but, you know, just having the ability, even as a member of Congress, to be able to interface with our governor, now vice president, it's never been like it is right now. I'm thrilled. I mean, for us in our state, I think we have so much to be proud of. And I think that, you know, we have an expectation as well. And I don't think that our fellow Hoosiers are going to be disappointed. Holiday plans? None. I couldn't even <laughs> tell you what day Christmas is. I, when I came in here, you guys start talking about Christmas, and am I ready? I'm, I'm asking what day is it and what day is Christmas. I, you know, <laughs> holidays seem to, I, I seem to blow right past them because, I, you know, we, we carry a really heavy schedule, very, very involved in, um, in the community, you know, when I get to be home. And um, so it'll be what it is. But all I know is I'm making... Um, Sweet and sour Polish style there you go. for a Christmas dinner. I have to make a double batch because all of our family's coming in. And they all want it. And it's the one thing I make really well. You people do really good Christmas meals. <laughs> you know, I've spent enough do. Christmases in South Bend, Indiana, and I'm one you. massive wedding. Yeah, I'm always talking to Brian in the car as we're driving around the district and stuff about different things. And we're always talking about food. Seems like we're always hungry. But I was just telling him today that my mom has lived with us since my dad died. My mom's lived with Dean and I for probably seven years, seven and a half years. And my mom is one of the most fantastic cooks ever. So my husband lives high on the hog it's totally taken care of when i'm not there and then brian says to me well, do you cook and i said you know i i do cook really well and dean and i did survive you know obviously 13 years before my mom came in for the last seven but um but we are so blessed i mean we eat restaurant quality food because my mom is a phenomenal Excellent. cook ethnic we have spices that fill up our kitchen and um this is a great time of year for us but i can only profess to, to actually make the best sweet and sour <laughs> on uh, this side of poland <laughs> thank you so much for all your visits thank during you. 2016 we we really appreciate it and we certainly look forward to visiting with you again as we go into the well, new year well it's so good to see you guys and it's so good that baron almost halfway smiled here if you can see it on the yes, website i know so what an accomplishment that was this morning merry christmas, merry christmas to you, to you, to you tom and, yeah. and baron merry christmas you too you too, Jaggy. Thank you. It's 1144 at 92.1 WROI. 92.